you're one and a half weeks out right now, right, Nate? Yeah, I'm doing the cow, so. Mm. Yeah, man. How do you feel? I feel good. Um, last year, I got ninth place, so I'm just trying to get into the first call out this year. Um, oh, yeah. Probably like ten pounds heavier, and uh, but could, my condition would probably be just as good. What did you think you needed more of or less of um, from the last Cali Pro? I just wasn't big enough, and I was I was trying to like because I I figured out I wasn't going to be like have as much mass as I wanted to, so I was just like I'm just going to get it shredded as possible, and then uh, that didn't really work. <laughs> <laughs> so I came in super light, you know. See, this is yeah, but Sandy was the head judge and she, she likes conditioning, so I went the conditioning route. And uh, that that show right there, uh, on the other good. one that that was a master's pro show, um, a 40 plus show. I got first in that one. That was at that was an NPC West Coast show, a center podium. Are you over 40? Damn, yeah, I'm 41. Good for you, man. You look great. Uh, yeah, thank you. I got all the gray hair. So I, I was married and I got four kids. So, <laughs> <laughs> are any any of your kids into bodybuilding? Nah, but they're pretty jacked. Yeah, they're pretty. They're they're pretty jacked. They play baseball. I have twin boys that are seventeen. Then I got a twelve year old son. Then eleven year old daughter. So I coached a. Uh, I coached a twelve year old, wow. uh, Bronco baseball. So it's eleven and twelve year olds on the on the baseball coach for that. Yeah, your arms are crazy, bro. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my leg my legs are probably like my weak my weakest point. Um, just because I, I I just wasn't training legs. Like I I got back into bodybuilding after I got a divorce at thirty five, and um, you know if you're just sitting on the couch, you're not really training legs for bodybuilding contests. So it's only yeah. been like five six years. That I got back into it. Right on. Gentlemen. Zade, long time no see, brother. <laughs> long time no see, bro. How you doing? I'm good. Did you get a meal in yet? You got yeah, food? I just nice. got one then. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great. How I'm, you doing, I'm, at the, I'm at the point in prep where I, Nate was saying like he ate his fish in like 10 seconds. I, I try to like slow it down. I don't know if you guys get like this, but like sometimes when I have a meal, I'm like, I don't want to start eating it because then when I start eating it, it's going to end quick. And then I'm going to be sad that I don't have a meal anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah Man, you. hunger, hunger, uh, dealing with hunger is a different animal, you know? Yeah. Just that's all you think about when you're hungry. It's food, yeah. food, food. Yeah. This prep, oh. I haven't been that bad. Um, but there, there's been a couple of times where I'm just like, I just want to tear some shit up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, uh, oh, yeah. but but it helps me out coaching the kids baseball is like, because I'm just out there on the field a lot and, you know, I don't have time to think about eating. Yeah. You got you to keep yourself busy, right? Because if you're sitting around, you're going to think about, oh, man, I got two hours till the next meal. So I'll do the same thing. If you're doing podcasts or I'm working with clients at the gym, it just makes the time go by so much faster. And then uh, once my last meal is done, I'll take a bath and go right to bed. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, I, I'm at the point where I can't even sleep. <laughs> that's yeah. why. That's why I do baths, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'll, I'll do an Epsom salt bath, and I'll listen to binaural beats. Um, on check out Magnetic Minds on YouTube. They got some really good binaural beats. They'll they'll knock you out. So I'll I'll just be sitting in the bath. Sometimes I just close my eyes, or sometimes I'll read a book. And I'll literally once I'm like falling asleep in the bath, and I'll just get out, and go right to bed. And it helps keep me asleep. Yeah, I need, I need that. Because it's like, I go to sleep at 12. I'll be up at 3, pissing. Yeah. And then I get up again at like 5.36. And I'm just like, oh, man. Just like, I might as well just get up now and take the kids to school. <laughs> yeah, I know. So it sucks it right stop. now. <laughs> the body wakes up at 3 a.m. It's like, ready to go? You're like, nah, man, I need to sleep. <laughs> and the body's like, no, you don't. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I want to know that fucking tub that fits you, dude. You're so fucking big. What kind of tub do you fall asleep in? A uh, dude, like, um, I don't know, man. Like, we got lucky when we moved to the condo here. The tub is is big, and it's kind of got like a slope on the back. Like, it's it's like a a ramp on the back, as opposed to being like a tub that's like straight up and down. So it's really comfortable. And then I buy um, I, I bought like a pillow for it and everything, and like 
I've just got like a whole setup in there and I just fill it full of Epsom salts. And then right beside, I've got like a little stool. I put my phone, I got my book, book light. I put on a candle and I'm in there until I pass out basically. That's, that's, well, that's like my prep secret, yeah. man. Yeah. Prep secret. Yeah. It sounds yeah. relaxing. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. What do you guys want to talk about? I figure we'll, um, we'll run to the New York real quick. And then, uh, I got a bunch of questions from uh, the podcast. We'll, so we'll do questions and then we'll, it won't be too long. Cool. Yeah, it should be good. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys. There we go. Of Yo, course, man, no problem. Yeah, thanks for having me on. What's, what's going on, boys? The man, the yeah, man, legend, EP09. Uh, we do what we can. What's happening? Who do we got? <laughs> hey, Nathan. Uh, sorry. Yeah, no, uh, I haven't met you guys before. How's it going? Good, good, it's going good. Good. Yeah. yeah, so I just good. I just met Nathan today. He's one and a half weeks out from the Cali Pro. Zade, I'm sure you know Zade. Zade, Nathan. Yes, I do. This is Kenzin. He runs the EP09 bodybuilding YouTube channel. Um, he's oh. a fellow Canadian. He's out in What's New up, brother? Out east. Nice to yeah, yeah, I've, yeah, I've, I'm I've the, seen uh, him on before on your, yeah. on your show, and I, I was I was gonna check out a YouTube earlier. Uh, I think he had a New York Pro uh, review too that just came out. Huh? We just did the breakdown yesterday. Yeah, it was it's actually been pretty well received. I, I I meant to send you some of the stats, Robin. Yeah, it's uh, it's doing well. We the channel's just so much fun, man. Being able to you know talk pro bodybuilding because I just never had an outlet, and that's why I started the thing to begin with, right? And mm -hmm. about a year later, now I'm here talking to the best in the world, you know, it's, it's awesome for me. I mean, I've, I've always trained, but being able to really get in, you know, like this is just, it's, it's fantastic. So no, I'm, I'm just happy to be here, man. When did you start your channel, Kenzin? Like, when did you start EPZ09? It was two weeks before the 2022 Olympia when I started uploading and it just kept going from there. Nice. Awesome. Who you got yeah. for your top three or top Top five? three. Yeah, yeah, can do top five. That's uh, cool. So, right here. Oh, we we, we gonna this put is, it down? All right. Yeah, this is this sure. is Ken, this is Kenzin's uh, page here, and uh, hmm. we got we got all the guys here, so we can just take a quick look through everybody, just super quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Christopher Burner, the Danish giant, who's looking pretty big. Danish giant. So this guy's going to be like 300 pounds. Do you, do you guys know this guy, Nathan? Zay, have you seen this guy? Because No, I haven't. No, yet. I don't know who this guy is. Who's that? This is uh, Christopher. He's amazing. Yeah. He's pretty tall, huh? like 6'2". Shredded. Or mm -hmm. Yep, 300 pounder. I know Morgan. Morgan is the only one I know. Yeah. Yeah, he's a monster. You can tell. And then... We've got he's like 325, that guy, right? Yeah, Morgan's like 325 right now. Mm. And then we've got Budesheim. You know, it'd be it'd be interesting to say, you know, who would be um who would win this show if Nick wasn't in the, the lineup. Yeah, yeah. That it'd be a, a whole question. different ball game. It'd yeah, be cool. a whole yeah. like that because two, three, and four is so up in the air. It's it's such, I mean. It's it's cliche, but it really is apples and oranges when you look at guys like Quint Beastwood, Antonio, and you throw a guy like Angel Calderon in there. You know, it's it's going to be that's going to be a tough two, three, four to predict, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This There's is another uh, guy doing it, uh, Dorian Haywood. Do you guys know him? Oh yeah, I know Dorian really yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. He, he he's doing it too. Very thick, thickly muscled bodybuilder. Yeah, extremely. So. I don't know how he's going to stack up with the top 10, you know? I don't think Doreen's but, conditioned uh, enough right now, man, to be honest. I don't I don't think he should even do this show. Um, I haven't seen his latest, saying, latest pictures, you know. What you say he was running, Robin, like 1,700 calories right now? Yeah, he's, he's on like 1,700 calories and like no no carbs at all until his last meal. And then he has like... 60 grams of sugar before bed. So I'm not, I'm not sure what's up with that, but we, all know, we now. got, we got Xavier Wills and desktop bodybuilding as well. Yo, what's up, my man? Haven't seen you in a while. I know. Long time. No see. So, what's up, bro. 
Hey man, Zaid, I haven't seen you in ages. Wait, was that Zaid? <laughs> Long time. Oh, there's Zaid, there's Zaid. Time. Okay, I can see Zaid. I know, <laughs> everybody missed each other so much, I figured we'd have to bring you all together, you know, just so we could catch up, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait, wait. yeah. I, I know this guy. I, I know this guy. Yeah, I've, I've seen, seen you before while. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I've Literally, been, I've, I've, been sending, <laughs> I've been sending him a couple of messages. He hasn't gotten back to me, actually. He's been ducking me. Oh, dude, <laughs> I, I, I have not been ducking you. I've, uh, I've had a lot on. And also, um, yeah, Instagram just loved to ban me and block me from using stuff on devices. Like right now, I can only, I can't log into my desktop body account unless it's on one specific browser on my computer or it's on my old iPad for some reason. It just doesn't let me log in. Just goes error. I'm, error. Just, I'm, I'm just messing with you, dude. I'm just messing with you. You know. But no, I, I will hit you back. Because that, that's why I got in your I'm stream not. the other day. And I was like, dude, hit me on my other Instagram because the other one just sucks. Yeah. On. We, no, we got, I wanted we, to get you on there yesterday. Yeah, we got we got Nick Shrink and Power jumping on right now, too. Nice. Oh, wow. I'm just kidding. I'm just That's kidding. awesome. I was going to say, no <laughs> way. <laughs> he doesn't like, do, there's a little troll. There's a little he doesn't do live. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no. no yeah. yeah. By the way, you guys, Dorian uh, Hayward lost his coach uh, a week, yeah. uh, two weeks, a yeah. couple of weeks ago. So I think, uh, yeah. I think he's affected. Pretty 100%. Much. That, that's what I thought, man. It's like he, he lost his, his only coach that he's been with for his entire pro bodybuilding career. Dave Kalick, who is such, a, he was such an amazing person. Like even when I met him, talked to him backstage at the 2021 Puerto Rico Pro for like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. And he just said some like really nice things to me. Like he didn't even know me. He, he didn't know me at all. And he was just like, Robin, listen, like I, I can tell you're such a genuine person. You're such a great guy. And I just want to say like, you know, you did a good job today. And I was just like, damn, like, you know, that, that, what a nice thing to say, man. Thank you so much. So, you know, I, I really feel for Dorian, you know, just, I can only imagine, you know what I mean? Like your your coach, and now you're trying to go into your show, the first show you've done without your coach who's passed away. And I know he he literally just, you know, put out like a a YouTube video where he was like at his memorial and stuff during his full day of eating on muscle and strength. And um, you know, that's why I said I was like, I don't know, man. Like I, I'm sure he wants to do this show for him. So I completely support that decision. But, you know, I feel like it would be good for Dorian to kind of have someone to help him at this point. Because uh, you guys know, like, how fucking hard it is to dial yourself in these last couple of weeks. Like, you don't know what the hell's going on because your brain just starts, you know, telling you different things every day, mm-hmm. right? But one thing I know about Dorian, he, he's an incredibly intelligent person. He works his ass off every single day. I would love to see this guy do well. So, you know, even though I don't I don't agree with his, his 1,700 calorie diet... That's just my critique from one bodybuilder to another. You know, all all things aside, like, I love this guy. I think he's a great guy. We've had him on the podcast before, and we'll have him on again for sure. Uh, and, and why do you think 1,700 calories is too low? Uh, yeah, way too well, low. For, you, this, for, oh, this, yeah. for this guy, way yeah. too low. Way too low. No, yeah, but I I mean, what, what else would you do when you want to get inside out puke? Aren't you going to eat less eventually? Yes, but you know, you, you would arrange things like you need to do more fasted cardio as opposed to cardio like later in the day. And then, you know, probably having refeeds. And I, I just don't think like a lot of bodybuilders are going to get to that condition just by eating 1700 calories. I think at some point, you're going to have to manipulate things a little bit. And then I, I don't personally, I don't think having like, like uh, 16 ounces of pomegranate juice uh, before bed is going to help your conditioning or anything like that. So, you know, it's just just my, I have to say though, my, my uh, and stuff, right? for my show, I went down to 800 calories a day, bro, Dude. for a couple, a couple months, and I was starving. Yeah, but I got but, shredded. But, yeah, you but had to get I to a certain shredded. weight, though. I was, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, that was the uh, thing. But you, yeah, you just had to squeeze into that light, heavy class. Mm. I'll tell yeah. you what, what I, I think did, what, what I do to, to get in shape is I prefer to give myself more fuel. But I'll work. I'll work harder in terms of like with cardio. I'll do high intensity cardio. And I'll do go faster in the morning. I'll do 200 rep deadlifts in 20 minutes uh, with like 185 pounds. So I'm like just a pull of sweat on the floor. Um, you know, I'll do like hit on the stairmaster. I'll do like bike sprints, wind gate, like until I'm just, again pull of sweat. Like I'm just I'm trying to work so hard so that my body is constantly needing to be fueled, and that's what works for me. But you know. If if you were bringing the conditioning 
and you're shredded to the bone on 800 calories, then, then, okay, dude, like, I'm not going to say anything because you brought the conditioning. But if you're not bringing the conditioning, then I would say that that's when we want to analyze and, and, and tweak things around. Right. So I, I could totally yeah. be fucking wrong. If he comes in here, peeled and crushes everybody, then you know what I mean? Like, then there you go. Like, you know, I'm, I'm totally yeah. wrong, but, but I only just, say that not, not yeah. to be like causing an argument or anything. It's no. just because uh, some people would say, if you eat less, but train less, you would save your joints. And that way you're not as fatigued versus if I ate a lot more, but I trained a lot uh, longer or I did more cardio or more hit workouts throughout the day. This would tax my, my joints, my, my nervous system, and uh, it's less rest time. So some yeah. people would look at it if I'm not perspective. I'm eating less, but I'm also training less. So I'm kind of like I'm pulling back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's like know, both, both are true, really. Both, yeah. both are true. Like uh, with clients I've had before, I, I, I'll sort of try to gauge whether it, uh, like are they overtraining and overreaching in terms of the amount of cardio, the amount of everything they're doing. And are they doing too much in terms of that? It's like, okay, well, I might give them a week or two where I pull back the volume of activity, yes. but actually pull back the calories as well. So it's sort of yeah. equivalently pull them back. So it's going to be a lower calorie week or two or whatever. And then two weeks later, we bump up the calories a bit again, you know, just a, a marginally, you know, maybe a little bit more carbs, but then bump up the cardio in relation to it. And then a lot of time that gives the metab like gives the body a kick, you know, because the body loves homeostasis so it's going to want to try to get to a certain point but if you you feel like you're overtraining Absolutely. then you can change that and then pull back the calories a bit but then also your metabolism i find when you're doing lower calories and lower volume for too long you need to give it that kick at some point where you increase the calories whether it's through people doing it through cheat meals or refeed days or a few refeed days in a row there has to be something yeah. that's changing because you can't just stay on the same amount of calories and diet throughout and just only just decrease calories to nothing and nothing else changes because eventually your body's going to try to try to sabotage you essentially. Exactly. Exactly. You, you nailed it, Xavier. Like with the undulating type of progression, that's, that's what I do. Like I would never say we're going to do 16 weeks of crazy deadlift hit. Like this stuff is like you do it for a week, then you pull back and then you, you, you refeed and you, you push up your food and then you pull back. And that way you're not actually going to be lowering your metabolism over time. But again, like you said, Zay, like everybody's different. And I, I don't know if you know, I actually worked with Justin Compton before. And he's a great coach. And I got I got peeled and he, and he gave me, I remember I, I wasn't looking at the calories until I got to the point where Nathan was, where I could not sleep. And I was waking up every hour just starving. And I was like, hmm, I'm just curious to see how many calories I'm on right now. And it was about 1,500. <clears throat> and I was getting to the point where I was actually starting to lose muscle. And then that's when I kind of figured, okay, like, something has to change right so i think you know first of all what you believe is going to be true for you so if you believe okay i got to start myself and eat 800 calories and eat you know like eight ounces of white fish six times a day like eric fankhauser did i mean hey it fucking worked for him nathan i'm sure you're doing something very similar you're just starving on that white fish i go through those periods too and there is a period to do that but just like you said xavier there's that period of time where if i'm like i'm trying to just stay in the plan like okay this is a plan 700 calories every day every day every day every day it's almost like as bodybuilders we kind of get hung up on the it, every day has to be the same whereas actually the body adapts much better to constantly novel stimulus right so there's the progressive overload kind of thing right it's like okay progressive overload works until a certain point it works until it doesn't and then what do you do next now something has to change so that's why there's there's no specific bodybuilding diet that works for everybody it's trying to figure things out on a day-to-day -day, week to week basis and then knowing it's like okay i've got a show in four weeks this is where i need to be at four weeks this is where i need to be at two weeks and this is what i need to do in order to get there so that's just like little tips that i'll do is like if i'm feeling like if i'm behind it eight weeks out that's when it's time to start doing some high intensity deadlift and wind gates and then once i feel like i've got myself ahead a little bit then i can pull back go back down to like less training and less intense cardio and then you know go through that undulating cycle but anyways again everybody's got coaches everybody's got people to help them for that reason too right because i feel like i would go crazy if i was making all those decisions by myself right well here's here's yeah. the thing though like you like you said and xavier like you said too like as as a coach this is what i would do well in terms of dorian 
just doesn't have that right now, right? And I've and and I think he probably doesn't want that at this point. You know, like it's two weeks out. He just this is the only coach that he worked with. Is that th- th- am I right there? Yes. Yeah. 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 So he's. Just, I, I think that he's probably just doing something in around what his coach has done with him before, and he's just trying to get himself to that point of you know being able to just get the show done and then you know reset. Get some, get some calories into him and then figure out what, what the next step is. Right. So yeah. I, I hope that he does well and he, and he has done well. He showed up, you know, in, in really good shape in the past and he is a really good dude from what I've seen on social media. Right. So, I mean, for we, we all wish him the best of course. Oh yeah. hundred yeah. percent. And that's, yeah. uh, that's why I hate like actually giving critiques sometimes. Cause it's like, you don't actually know what's going on. You're just observing, but that's my analytical mind just being like, Oh, how can we make things better? How can we like, peak to perfection right but i think i think yeah, you're, like you're a coach yeah you're a coach exactly yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. but uh but yeah, again, the best yeah. the best is to keep the food as high as you can you know as long as you can you know yeah, yeah. so yeah but i mean sometimes if you're you're up against it it's like hey i gotta i gotta pull something uh to try to, yeah. try to get in shape in time if you're if you're committed to the show it's like man so you're rolling the dice but that's the good thing about bodybuilding that there's no rules and you could do it however you want to do it yeah, and there's uh, yeah. different ways uh, to skin a cat or whatever that fucking yeah, thing. absolutely, hundred percent, yeah, hundred percent. I sent Robin a uh, a video there the uh, uh, last week. I saw he had a video of him doing uh, dumbbell push ups. So I sent him a video. He was like, "That's oh, awesome, yeah. bro." But I can't help but critique, and I was like, "Fuck, this guy's a coach in the half, man." <laughs> 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 but you know what? It, he he was right. I will say that hundred percent. What was it? Was it like elbow positioning? Like, hey, you had your chest like no. out or? Was it? Uh, no. Com- com- I was completely straight. Shoulder. Completely straight, except I was looking down. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. I'm going to pull it up. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Here we go. Everybody's going to watch you do your, your push ups. So, this, the, keep, keep in mind, this was 5 30 in the morning or six, or it wasn't par- far past 5 30 if, uh, if it wasn't at 5 30 i was oh. actually away on training using a shitty hotel gym and um oh it's, it's, yeah, it's back further than that um yeah maybe. it's not gonna show it there i'm just gonna show you real quick the one that's on my page i guess yeah yeah don't show them mine okay i'll i'll show you how i mean you happens. can look no you you, you could i i think i think i did pretty good I, i'm i'm good with push-ups body weight exercises and shit like that like i I'm oh no Your, yours was great man it, it's just the fact that it won't come up because it's like uh, mobile only like same thing when i try to send baby uh my check-in pictures Th- this is what it was is you're yeah. doing you're doing push-ups on dumbbells where the dumbbells are standing straight up and down like that man i would break my wrist if i slip my arm is broken yeah. <laughs> i'm just <laughs> I've got those, you know what I mean? Like your arm, like your guys' arms, like pro bodybuilders especially, it's probably you probably got less chance of breaking an arm if you slip there. Well, you, you can see, or maybe maybe more because more weight. Yeah, this this dumbbell is definitely shaking a lot, you know, and it, it really got my chest pumped like crazy. It was it was fucking hard. Um, They're great, yeah. man. I'm yeah. I'm putting them into my next workout too. I loved them. Yeah, don't don't try these at home, fellas. You know what I mean. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, it, it, I, I wouldn't do them a couple of weeks out. I'm like, nah, <laughs> yeah, dry, too yeah. dry. Everything's too dry for that. Like, yeah, <laughs> risk do, versus reward. You know, do them at your own risk. Exactly, and that's that's the kind of stuff that we get up to when I train with Benoit. I'm like, dude, really? You think I can do this? He's like, you're, you can do it. Be an athlete. I'm like, okay, athlete, let's go. Just click, turn it on. Right, right. Dave um, Dave Plumbo would say though he's like he's like body bodybuilders shouldn't do kooky stuff and stupid things you know yeah yeah and look that's a bodybuilding movement as far as I'm concerned man you know that's nothing kooky about it like you know, Plumbo all Good I guys. can say is like sometimes <laughs> sometimes I question I do too man I do sometimes you question it, it's like I don't know this is kind of weird is it gonna work and then you look at the the chest pump you get and you're like all right you know what I mean like. I'm glad I how how that. risky is it of slipping? Like how how much at risk do you feel doing it? Like have you you know what I mean? I I didn't okay. feel like it was. I wouldn't do it if I felt. I don't do stuff that like I feel like is risky or dangerous. That's why it's like you just you just take your time and you do what you're comfortable with, right? Like if you if you feel like you're not comfortable doing it to that extent, then just do them with the hex dumbbells on the ground where your hands are on the actual handles because that's going to be yeah, like, safer, yeah. right? So. Just start there and work your way up. 
Um, did, did you get more of a pump because like maybe like you're stabilizing, you're using different, like, you know, you're activating different fibers that you normally don't activate maybe? It, it was that. And it was like how much I had to focus. I was like, holy crap. Like my whole mind and body was like stabilizing and focusing and you, you get that extra depth. There's nothing magical about it, but it's just, again, it's like something new, something different. It's a novel stimulus. And, and sometimes it's like, hey, we just train for a challenge. Sometimes we train for fun too. Yeah. Um, I disagree. There's something get, magical about it. No, there, the there's, there's something magical. <laughs> it is magic. Do some crazy shit to get the views sometimes. Tenson oh, is looking yeah, bigger right now, so I've got to say. Thank you. Yeah. Thank that's you. A, Thank I had a little padded gun right there. <laughs> uh, I've been working on it. Good, uh, good, uh, good, 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 he is going to turn some heads at this show. Like he's yeah. made such massive improvement. This is his first year where yeah. he's gone all in on bodybuilding. He quit his job. He started doing online coaching. He got the supplement contracts. Like he went all in, man. And, and you know what? It definitely paid off. He made the improvements. There's no question. Yeah. The front light's ridiculous. Like <laughs> he looks so different front with, lights with, with his short hair. He looks like a completely different person. Yeah, no, I told him yeah. I hated it. Yeah, he no. would probably <laughs> add like ten pounds of stage weight if he shaves his hair. He would probably look bigger. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, probably. I think it works for him. It balances out I, his I, physique. I, yeah, not as much as last year. He was he had a like he had three times that last year, man. Yeah, yeah, it's huge yeah. last year. This is yeah, he, my, he's my he's person. way thicker yeah, in, in person than than what you than what this looks like. Like when I seen him at the Cow Pro, I was like. That's a, that's a big dude. Like, <laughs> wait, do you mean do you mean the hair? Well, he's five nine. No, no, he's no, five no, nine, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the height. Yeah, he's he's like similar height to me, and then but like he's he's wide, like like wide, like his body is like like big. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I'm kind of like a slender type of like more classicy looking type of body. Like he's like a, a thick like walker. Like I think they I think they would match up pretty good. Like a, like a caveman, yeah. you know, pe people sometimes, yeah, yeah, say, yeah, yeah. People say, like, I'm a caveman. I'm like, no, you don't know Stu. Like, he's a caveman. <laughs> yeah, that's how he walked. I was like, damn. Yeah, in, in the best way possible, you know? Yeah. He does look like a caveman. I never thought about that. Tony O. <laughs> Tony O. Make good one. Yeah. If Nick, oh, if you Nick know what's funny, funny, go ahead. Sorry, you're wrong. I was just going to say um, that we say like, oh yeah, he does look like a caveman and we have all these like images of like these huge like mammoth dudes back in the day. But like over time, humans have actually gotten taller. So it's like these cavemen and stuff that we all say were huge and stuff. They were probably like five foot tall. Yeah, <laughs> like short and squat and probably wide. Yeah. 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 Like, here's a wide dude. Right. The yeah. back, the yeah. back is yeah. crazy. Just the yeah. density, like it's crazy at his age as well, because he's not like an old dude. Like it's not like he's you know thirty eight years old with that level of muscularity and density. Yeah, he improved his back a lot since last year. Yeah, yeah. I was talking with Tonio, and he's up. He's up a pretty significant amount of weight from where he was at this point out from. Uh, the Arnold Classic, uh, Brazil. So he he he's going to show up bigger. What do you guys think about uh, Christian Wolski? He's underrated, man. I think he's good. He's tagged me in a few things lately, and yeah, I think he's yeah. looking, looking pretty damn good. The legs, Just, uh, man. The legs are, from the front, especially, really good. Yeah, yeah, he looks pretty impressive here. He's one of those guys that can just low key, like maybe not in this show. I don't know. He looks really good, but. Um, he can just low key show up at a show and place third. You know, I can just see that happening this year, or it'd be right up there because if this is like yeah. this physique looks great to me. Like if you told me this won a pro show last year, I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got those nice sweepy it. thighs. You know, the 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 lateralis sweeps out nice. Yeah, he's just improving a good amount every year, and yeah, I think in at least if it's not this year for him, then I think next year he'll be. Uh, yeah, right up there in any pro show, he sort of does partly outside of the you know the big big ones. Yeah, for sure. Upper, upper chest, shoulders, the legs are good. The the upper body. Yeah, 
We got we got a little bit more fluidness. Kenzen Kenzen's favorite guy right here. He is, man. He's yeah. he he's my favorite going into the show. I, I'm such a big fan of this guy, man. He is good, hey. Yeah. I sort of forgot about this goal we have a big names in there. Dude, he just needs a bit more happy from the side. Uh, he's yeah. got he's got the best shoulders in the IFBB, man. He the the best. Yeah. I don't know this guy. I don't think I've yeah, seen him I don't before. Know him either. It's Joseph Keft, awesome. isn't it? Jade, he uh, was third it's a, last it's year Vettin. in New York, bro. Oh, Vettin, okay. Oh, he was third? Yeah. And he oh, took, yeah, at the top. Yeah. He was, he took, he was uh, right, right behind Stu last year. Yeah, and he was third at the Arnold uh, Brazil in 2023 as well. Mm -hmm. Just, man, if he just had hamstrings, it would make so much difference to those side shots. Could you imagine? Because that weight was just tiny. Those shoulders look huge. With a hamstring drop, yeah. it'd be game over for everybody, basically. Yeah. I think just all he needs Dude. is a bit more hamstring, a bit more back, and yeah, his physique is looking like because you look at all the other body parts and like the arms are ridiculous. Yeah. Quads are great. You yeah. know, midsection's really good. Like he's really not missing a lot, but what he is missing sort of on a taller physique, it stands out a little bit more. But once he fills that out a bit more, he's gonna be I mean, he's more dangerous this right year there. than ever, obviously. And then you know, with more years of progression and improving those body parts, he's going to be, yeah, crazy. He's got a good combination of mass with aesthetics, which is nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. That shoulder yeah. right there looks crazy. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Kenson, you're right on the shoulder, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, man, nice. he's got, he, he definitely has things he needs to bring up, but I love this guy's physique as it currently stands, man. The, the, absolutely nuts. I, like, just as a fan, I, I love this guy, man. I can't wait to see him in New And he's doing California, too. Oh, that'll be good. That'll be good. Oh, it wow. goes to show how much the standard has increased the last few years. Let's go yeah. check out Justin to see if he has any new posts, I guess. Dude, I feel I feel bad we didn't even mention Justin in um, Beatty's podcast. Uh, he's doing New York as well? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, a, just from, is from it Detroit, though, I know. You know, from Detroit was. I mean, he didn't get, have like a real good mm. look. So, I mean, that's probably why we yeah. didn't mention him. He's a very, very massive guy in person. Yeah, I feel he like he looks a little flatter to, to me here in these photos, but yeah, he says food is coming in, in the caption. Yeah, because uh, they're trying to diet him down to, to to get his waist in. So, I mean, they're trying to just. Pull him. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, he he looks really good, but with this lineup that we have, I don't think he's gonna be able to make the top six. So unfortunately. Yeah, I mean this is the stock lineup, killer. but yeah. if he comes in looking like this, though, what do you think? Different story. Uh, I just don't right. think he will come in looking like that. If he came in exactly. looking like that, then yeah, he can mix yeah. it up. But I just don't. I, I just can't see that happening. Yeah. yeah. My, you know, to to be honest, this is the show. The last time we've seen him being on on. After that show, everything went south in yeah. terms of yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. But then again, yeah. there, there you go. It's like it's like co different coaches, and then it's like relearning your body and going through that that process over and over and over again, as opposed to going through contest after contest with the same coach, you can start getting to know your body better and better and start nailing it with those peaks. So, I mean, I, like we talked about before, it's like, I don't think he's done. He's definitely not done. It's just, he's got to bring back what he used to bring. And I don't think he's too far off. It's just getting that right combination in those last couple of days or weeks or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. You guys remember so, Milan Sadik? Yeah. He's awesome, man. Great yeah. physique. He's right. doing it. Too. I just don't think he's gonna have the size to get up there. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I, mean, I think yeah. Really good front Great double. physique, though. Really good. Yep. And he was he was he's been third in New York Pro 2019. So um good. let's see. <laughs> Why is that on his page? That man's physique guy. We saw that yesterday. We skipped over it. Uh, like, guys, uh, you know, guys, you know, it's like, thank God I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're not going to talk about this, but it's just not the most confusing image you've seen from bodybuilding forever. 
It's just like, what am I looking at? Like my brain can't really understand what's going on. Yeah, oh it looks this like is the thing, be, man. Like, like, where's the top at? Where's, <laughs> I've never seen that one. <laughs> okay. Dude, I couldn't even cover that on my channel. I thought it was. Oh, so, I, I wouldn't even entertain the idea of it. It was ridiculous, so and it was a very short-lived conversation. Thankfully, why is it on his page? Was he just trying to get views? I don't know. I don't. I don't know, man. Anyway, I think bro just shared it at the time, being like, "Yeah, I support this division." I can't <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> Vladimir Rook. This is the thing. This guy's really good as well. Wow, there's so many good yeah. guys doing this show. Look at the quads, man. Yeah, look look at the... I really like when guys can get those um, chest striations going like cross down, like into their street, like um, into their serratus, yeah. the, the packs, upper packs, into the lower packs. I think that's a really cool look. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. He's nailed it. scared yeah, that's a nice side leg. Good conditioning there. Says he was yeah. uh, seventh place at his open debut at the was this the Europa? That looks like the show that that's the same show that James Hines had won, but this might have been a year or two later. Oh yeah, I think a couple of years later. I can't remember who won. Oh, was that the one Regan versus uh, Regan versus Nathan? Nathan, uh, I believe at the Europa. Yeah, the Spain one. Uh, Regan won Spain. It was, yeah, and then and Nathan. They were, hit, they were hit to hit at that show. I'm pretty sure. Or well, Nathan definitely did that Europe Europa show because I remember I've got I've got the video of it. The um obviously not Gilco, but the Gilco style one that was done. I feel bad. Can't think of which videographer did that, but yeah. was it Mar Mariah? Mariah seen that in the background. Looks good. Mar yes. Mariah, you yes. Maybe. Yeah. Is that how you say his name? I'm not sure, dude. I apologize. I say Moria. Moria, you? Not sure. Moria. <laughs> great, fo great, great footage, though, man. No question. Looks great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was good. He does, man. I don't know. Like, this that's guy either. Oh. Yeah. It's like there's there's so many guys that you don't really know that well because we've just been all talking about like the top five so much, but like all of these guys are good. They're good. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. It's a great show. Excellent, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, but bring bring up Angel, bring up Angel. Yeah, the top ten is stacked in this yeah. show, no matter what. Whoever, whoever places yeah. in there doesn't matter. Yes. Like that's, that's yeah. a crazy this was look. the Olympia, yeah, yeah. That's a crazy look. This is when he had to suck down to two twelve. Yeah, but it looks it looks good. Like he looks way bigger than two twelve, obviously. Oh yeah, it's massive. Look at that side chest, man. There's so much mass. Crazy. How much bigger do you think he'll be? Yeah. yeah. Does anyone know his weight now versus what he was? No. Well, he's normally two twelve ways in, but that's him right there, and that's now that's the guest posing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, he, I can't tell because he's just so. I got to see how tall he is next to everybody. He's just so Not very. Thick. His upper his upper chest and everything is just so thick. He's thick, freak. He, he, his his upper chest is so thick that if he lays on his back, it's like instant like sleep apnea. <laughs> <laughs> Start choking. Yeah. When you think about it, that's yeah. true though. Like it literally be putting weight up here, you know. Seriously, yeah. Um, let's see if Nick has any updates before we move on. Yeah. Uh, not looking like anything. Oh, well, this one here though. I was so wondering what you guys thought about um, what What do you think about his back double next to like Martin's back double at the Pittsburgh Pro guest posing? I know it's a guest posing and all that, but I just noticed maybe like Nick, the width on his back looked phenomenal. It all looked like really, really good. I was just wondering if Martin just has more of that pop and density in those shots. And obviously like Nick wasn't carved up. And I think for, Nick, it probably makes more difference for Nick being carved up than Martin because Martin, it seems like even when he's flat, he still has that same sort of full look. Um, he still has that popping sort of look. So I don't know if it's that, but did did any of you guys notice that sort of maybe the back double comparison? Um, I did, uh, but I I still think Nick beats him from the back shots. You know, 
both of even them. Even at Pittsburgh? Lasford and, uh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I do too. Dude, I, I think the I, you Lasford, don't know how I, Nick I is, how double. big Nick is. Like, he, he has legitimate 30 pounds over Martin, you know? Oh, yeah, and he's definitely he, big. Huh? He, yeah. You know, so and they're probably the same height, aren't they? So I don't think he has 30 pounds much... over Martin because I think Martin's too... I think he was high 230s or 240, maybe. I think. Carla, 20 pounds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it was Nick. Yeah, yeah but it's Nick is like 275, right? Something like that. Oh, no, he's not 275 on stage, is he? Is he? He said he was 270 at the guest posing, though. I would no, have no, said no. Be like he he said he was down seven pounds as well after that too. So that'd make him yeah. like two sixty three. So yeah, he's got yeah, good twenty pounds on him, yeah, at least. Yeah. I, I think that's probably what had changed his look was that he if he had some more water, like that seven pounds of water, it's like it's gonna be like around that lower back area, so then you don't see as much of that taper. Whereas in that picture we just looked at, it's like he's got a crazy taper because his waist looks small from the back. So that's I think what made the difference. Cause I think um with Martin, like he was just a little bit drier overall, so it, it gave him that illusion. Um, but we know, like for sure, that Nick's got more mass on his back overall. So once you get that water off, then things start to pop more, and I think it's going to make a difference. But yeah, who knows? Right? Who knows? Yeah, it was. Is it there was any closer, chance? It was closer than what we thought it would be. I yeah. think that's why we were talking about it, like because I, I I thought Nick was just going to blow Martin out the water, but it's just like ah. You know, like it, it was closer than I'm like, oh, I could kind of I could kind of give it to him and not like, you know, it wasn't just like a knockout for Nick. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's let's do quick. We'll do like everybody says who they think is first, everybody second, third, fourth, fifth. We want to do it like that. Start with Nate. I got Nick. Yeah, I got Nick. Zade. Nick. Kenzen. Nick. Xavier. Martin. Oh shit! <laughs> no, you don't. You're just causing shit. You're just causing yeah. shit. No, you don't. All right. All right. Really? I, I think That's Martin is time. Martin's con- Martin's pretty confident, man. Uh, like I'll, yeah. I'll say that. I mean, like, he I looks think... incredible. No one's saying anything. And the thing is, yeah. he didn't yeah. carb up. He didn't carb up for that guest posey. I think uh, a lot of people are thinking that Martin tried to peak for it and Nick did nothing for it. I think both of them really did very little to nothing for it. You know, apart from getting tan on and stuff on stage. So yeah. I don't think that, you know, I don't think Martin was popping diuretics to look his best at the guest posing. So he knows he's got room to move. And I think he's encouraged, but he already looked so good next to Nick. Like if I personally, if I was judging it shot for shot, I would have had Martin winning at that guest posing, which means nothing. But I just think that the waist, how small Martin's waist came in and then how his sort of back double came out and he had that pop. And then some of the other shots as well, like the side chest looked really, really good. And I think looking at look, looking at it from a prettiness perspective, it's like, yes, Nick is more muscular. Like, no doubt. He is a more muscular, bigger, freakier dude overall. But I think Martin potentially could outcondition Nick and have a few more lines that maybe Nick doesn't have. Maybe, maybe, if Nick just doesn't nail it 100%. And I just think that that combined with the prettiness factor and the taper, maybe I think that Martin could just get ahead of Nick. And I think that maybe Nick could just miss the mark a little bit, but who knows, man, Matt Jansen said, look, trust me to Nick. And who, who are we to doubt Matt Jansen? Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, and, and even like and, Jay, and Jay Cutler brought up a good point on his podcast. He was saying that the different people at one week out, two weeks out, they have different looks. Some people hold more water. And Jay was saying like for himself personally, when he would do, his one week out guest posing, everybody would say, oh, Jay's not going to be ready because he'd be 20 pounds heavier at his guest posing than he would be on the Olympia yeah. stage. So Nick, clearly he's kind of one of those guys where he holds more water one week out versus Martin, who's already drier. But that doesn't matter. Nick said Nick said the opposite though in the past though. That's the only thing yeah. that worries me. He says he doesn't, re- he said, I don't really hold water. And everyone's saying, oh, you, you looked ready for 10 weeks and stuff. Mm. And he said, yeah, I don't really hold that much water. It's just, you know, I don't really change much. So that, that's the thing that just makes me worried because I've heard him say that. It makes me go, well, if you don't really change much, you don't really hold a lot of fluid, maybe they change things. Maybe they change what they've taken, what we've done, the flight. There's so many factors coming into it. He might've just trained just before going there. You know, you, you just don't know. So yeah. um, 
yeah. So I'm not judging him saying that Nick can't win it, but I still have to look at that guest posing and take it into consideration at least somewhat to what I think might happen if I make. But you are saying but, that Merton will beat Nick. Well, we need, we got to have some kind of discussion well, predicting. Point, or else it would just be us all agreeing with each other, and that wouldn't be any fun. But that, but but that's the thing is I haven't heard aside from maybe a couple of people that think that Quint Beastwood could potentially beat Nick, and I'm talking like two people. I haven't heard anybody say anything, even after the guest posing, of anybody saying that it won't be Nick winning the show. So this is honestly, especially for Martin Fitzwater, you're the only person that I've heard that has Martin ahead of Nick in their predictions. I mean, if well, he, he's made of- me he's made me look good already this year. So like I, I said, I think in, at the end of 20, 2022, yeah, I, I don't know if I said it in my videos or if I was saying it to people privately or, or what it was, I was saying... When Martin, like he's having a year off, he'll come back in 2024. I was saying it with Arnold because that's what he sort of talked about a long, long way back. And I said, he's going to shock people about Arnold. He obviously didn't get the invite, but then he came in and won his pro show at the Detroit Pro, looked awesome. People were raving about him. And now we're talking about, a lot of people are talking about him now potentially beating Tonio and getting second in this show, beating some other really good guys as well. Tonio just got eight. I've heard heard that lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no matter what, if you think that he can beat Tonio, that's saying a lot, you know. And we haven't seen Nick on stage now. It's over a year and a half. We just don't know exactly. It's like, you know, if if anything, if there's a takeaway, it's like there's the potential there because there's a little chink in the armor from one guy and there's an extra feather in the cap from the other guy. And when you start stacking those up over time, it's like, this is a game of inches and momentum and, and building over time, right? So we can see that there is a potential for a shift over time. I don't know if it's going to happen now at this New York Pro, but certain guys are improving at different rates, right? And that's kind of what we take away from this. Like we like look look at Derek Lunsford and the rate that he's improving. Like he's oh, improving like incredibly quick, right? Mm-hmm. And other guys don't improve as quickly. Andrew definitely improving incredibly quickly and. You know what I mean? So it's just like, yeah, like let's for those guys like keep that momentum going. And then other guys, if you have that chink in the armor, it's like, oh shit. Okay, like maybe I'm not like impervious to everything. Like I gotta go back to the drawing board. And you know, I'm as bodybuilders, that's what we do. Like we have to see where our flaws are and we have to recognize those flaws. If we think we're perfect, then we go in there with all the confidence. But it's it's sometimes we need to figure out where our weakness is so we can improve that. And that's gonna be like that lowest hanging fruit in order for us to improve and and bring our best. So interesting, man. Very interesting. I can't wait to see how Stu does too. Yeah. Stu, like, you know, he's he's looked his best and he's going to definitely like be in the middle. He's not a man's monster, but he's not a a shapely guy, you know, so he's kind of like a hybrid. Yeah. Does anybody have Stu in second? I, honestly, I don't. I, I put Stu in, or in third. I, I think Tonio is going to beat Stu, but I put Stu in third. I think Nathan yeah. Diash put it really well um, on my podcast, which I think will be up probably just after this goes up. Well, before this goes up, when people are watching it. But um, no, no, this said, is going to go up before yours. Like, <laughs> Robin, stay out, man. <laughs> <laughs> this, this goes up instantly, but- bro. It's going to be up. Tomorrow morning. <laughs> Are we live now on YouTube? Um, oh, shit, I wasn't but, um, recording. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but he said, look, he said, the way I see it after this guy's posing, he said, oh, like, I've got like 40% chance Nick wins, 30% Martin, 30% Tony. That's sort of how he said it. But, like, I, the way I think it is, is we could see an off Nick Walker. We all go, oh, we've seen Nick on this many times in a row. It can't, it can't happen where he's off. Like, it, it can. Things can go wrong. Things happen. He could have just missed it by a few weeks. The photos could be in a different spot. Matt could be getting a different read. You know, you just never know exactly. Like he could just miss it by a little bit. And I think Nick is like Branch Warren back in the day in the sense that if Branch missed it by a little bit, he looked dramatically worse. And I think that's what happened to the guest posing because he hadn't peaked for the guest posing because he wasn't 100% on and he's on stage and every little bit of weakness or water on his physique is going to show up. I think it just sort of highlighted it. Yeah. So if he makes that tweak and nails it, I'm going to look like an idiot. And it's going to be like, oh, yeah, see, you know, it's Nick, you know, Matt told us, you know, all that. But yeah, I just think there's a chance. There's a chance he could miss it, which I don't wish that for Nick whatsoever. I, I actually think Nick's an awesome dude. I think he's a really nice guy. I think he's, you know, a freak. He's 
maximizing what he's got 100 and it's like hats off to him man like it, it's a, it's a credit to him at the end the amount of crap that Nick takes as well. Like I know I make videos and stuff like that, but I always try to put a positive spin on things as well. But yeah, he's, he's had to endure a lot. And I think that Nick now is probably hard enough to people's comments that this guest posing, had it happened two years ago? Yeah. Exactly the same way. And Nick got the exact same online criticism. Maybe this could have absolutely destroyed him prior to New York, but I don't think that it's going to mess him up so much mentally that he's going to completely, you know, mess it up but yeah. there is a chance as well because you've got to think about that mental aspect man because even though i'm saying i don't think it will affect him as much getting off stage and then going online and thinking oh it's going to be pretty positive i'm going to freak everyone out because i'm one week out and i'm i'm third place in the olympia last time i competed there and then getting feedback of oh is martin going to beat him oh martin looks sick martin versus nick this is actually going to be close could he challenge him you that's got to start playing with your head a little bit like that's yeah. that's that's tough but Nick, Nick did get a little bit of a, a, a reaffirmation though. I, I watched uh, on Muscle and Fitness. He was actually on there with, um, so, so uh, too, John, yeah, yeah, Steve. yeah with, with Zach and John Romano and Steve. And, and Nick actually asked Steve, well, Steve said, you got to step it up when it comes to New York Pro. Nick sent him pictures like three days later to Steve. And he was like, is this better? And Steve was like, yeah, this is better. So Nick did get a little bit, you know, of uh, of maybe a confidence boost there saying, okay, everything's going to be okay. And he does come off as a guy that is pretty much unshakable. Although I've seen him shaking up maybe a couple of times. He's got that same mind. Like he, he's just got the Jay Cutler mindset when it comes to, you know, his confidence, right? Just it's not going to shake him. He's just going to come in and do his thing. And that's going to be it. And he loves when people don't. He always has, you know, he, he feeds off that shit. So like I said, I haven't heard anybody say, especially Martin when like Quint Beast, what I've heard, I haven't heard Martin yet. So look, man, if you nail it, I mean, dude, hats off to you. Hats off to you. It'll be a shock. Actually, it'll be a really exciting ending if it's anyone but Nick, you know? Did, did, did you guys hear? see that, that little yeah. video clip on RX Muscle with him walking on the stage? Nick? Nick? Yeah, uh -uh. There, there's a clip and it, his gut just looks like like really bad. So it's like, you know, like we're we're just judging on the shots right now, but on on the stage is more than the shots. Like we're we're looking at the transitions, we're looking at you walk on the stage and I if if he can't get that in the check, like I I feel that that that's how Phil lost. You know, like Phil was beating Road in, in all the shots, but like the transitions when the gut was hanging out, that was the issue, and they didn't give him the win. That is true. That is true. Mid section like, is what did it. That's why he lost that Olympia. But like, yeah. look at look at that little clip on RX Muscle. <laughs> there it is, right that there. One? Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I don't yeah. know, like, <laughs> and that, that's why I, I brought up the the mindset thing. It's just I'm here up again, Tuesday. Yeah, evening. that's bad, right there. Yeah. Getting in the pose, sticking out. I'm just like, ah. You gotta you gotta keep that tight, you know. Like I mean, I, that's what we say. <laughs> that's undeniable, yeah. no question. That's very true. Right here, it's tight. You know what I'm saying? Right here, it's it's, it's tight. But just walking on there, <laughs> man. Go watch the interview on NPC News Online where they did a backstage interview with Nick and Derek. Nick was just letting the gut hang out, man. He didn't give a shit whatsoever. He I don't. Know. And he, the thing is that that was before the, he went out for the guest posing. And it, yep, it was. I, I mentioned this on um the last podcast that we just did for Beatty's channel. And I said, he was extremely confident that he was like, Tony's yep. like, what are we going to see out there, Nick? And he's like a champion. And we're and yep. like, oh, you're going to shock people? Like, yep. Like basically like, sort of like that. And I'm like, oh, it sucks that this went out after the guest posing as well, because then people can look retrospectively at it, you know, like, and I'm like, uh, and I, I just, feel, I honestly, I, I feel for Nick in all of this, to be honest. Um, yeah. because, oh. but the thing is as well, uh, I'm less worried about that bloat, that bit of the bloat, because I'm sure he's going to be more in check and now aware of it as well. Like when he went to go into that front relaxed, but also as well, this is at night time. Like I'm sure he's just eating his meals as normal and not going, Oh, I'm going to eat a bit less. Like maybe he's just finished all his meals for the day. Cause I think what this was late at night. So yeah. that could all obviously play into it as well. So I'm probably just, I'm just a little bit more concerned about maybe just the overall thickness to the, the midsection in combination with maybe the conditioning compared to Martin. That's, that's more, more of a thing that I'm concerned about for Nick than maybe just the, 
the light factor. Yeah, the conditioning looked better in the basement than the stage. Yeah. His yeah, basement yeah. photos is like, yeah, he's he's right on. Then when on the stage, it was a little bit different. Yeah. I will say, I think that's um maybe slightly harsh lighting as well. Cause like Martin, like Martin looked hard on stage, but I think Martin, when we see him in New York, I think we're gonna see some like crazy, crazy conditioning. I, I think that that lighting didn't show either of them um in their best condition, which I think made it even more impressive as to how Hunter looked, as to how I think even Samson and Andrew, like honestly, all those guys, I was very, very impressed with how everyone looked for the stage of their off season or comp prep and all that sort of stuff. Like Nick, probably I was the least impressed with to expectation, but I think Nick is going to make those changes and at least be. And I, and I think the only reason why we're, but, the only reason why we would ever be, uh, not as impressed with Nick's performance is because of the fact that he said he was going to like dominate and crush everybody, right? So when you oversell and under deliver, you get shit on. When you undersell and over deliver, everybody's like, "Whoa, you're the best thing since sliced bread, bro!" Like that's beef stew. In his that's defense, like, he hasn't so, uh, yeah. under delivered yet because the show hasn't gone yet. Hundred so, percent, exactly. Yeah, that's right. right. You're I think right. I think Nick is gonna kill all of them, honestly, bro. I think he's in a different league of his own. I think uh he's very uh like he's receptive to good criticism. I think now that we pointed it out, he's gonna have it two hundred percent in check. Yeah. And you're gonna see the flattest fucking ab midsection ever. And I think uh Nick's had about fifty thousand people for... pointed out. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and you know what too? You know what, too, like like you said, Kenton, is that he went and he got confirmation from Steve. So out of mm. all the other critics it's out not. there, if you get the one confirmation from the one person that actually matters, that's all you need. And that's boom, it. Feathers back in the cap and that armor's back up, baby. You know what I mean? It's like, because you yeah. might take everything else to heart, but then who actually matters? The judge. The head judge. Yes. Steve and if he tells you you're looking good, that's all that matters. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, anyway, New York's, I just New York's want to say, freaks yeah. too. New York's think, always think, been yeah. freaks. Yeah, yeah. I think Rick, we, we, we this so, so many huge. Times, so, yeah, you yeah. guys want to just get into some questions because we we've gone over the New York thing like probably for the last like four hours straight. So, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, 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 let's I love just, how we all still we all still have weekend. stuff to say. Yeah, yeah. Let's just see what happens Ooh. this weekend because you know what I mean. It's going to be a great show. So. It is a great show. It's gonna yeah. be a great but show. isn't it cool that we have this like fun debate? Like, you know what I mean? Like where we have a show that is so exciting and so deep that we could keep talking about it. Like there has been shows yeah. in the past where it's a, a clear top two. The rest is like not as exciting. It's like, it's so cool that we have a show that's so stacked. Uh, I just, yeah, I think it's going to yeah, be man. fun before the show, after the show, during the show. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's really, really cool. I think it's hilarious how long right. the straw is. Yeah, I was looking at Matt. I was like, "What's happening?" <laughs> it's my podcast. Be for a bigger so I can just sit here and drink all the, the, for the whole podcast, no problem. Yeah, uh, many people become an alcoholic. Be... No one will know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the right. next three weeks is going to be like crazy with shows, like because yeah. <laughs> yeah. if, if you don't make it at New York, you're going to Cali. If you don't make it at Cali, you're going to Toronto. So it's like, <laughs> bring it on, baby. Right. See, they had. Yeah. I'll be ready for you. <laughs> yeah man did you see um Home turf did you say they had a california pro last week uh, no. yeah, yeah that's where was, uh, angel yeah, calderon Cali- uh guest post yeah. yeah it was like a What's supplement that? california pro supplements so yeah it wasn't in spain it was called the california pro <laughs> yeah but it was it was know. supplements it was like a supplement yeah no. sponsor. It's so yeah, ridiculous. It, yeah it confused me too i was like what is that <laughs> yeah because they had a classic show it's where that um jose ma that guy that switched from open to classic, he competed and won it. And it said California pro. And I was getting so confused because I was like, there's a classic show in California. I'm like, why did he come there? And then I'm looking at it. I'm like, it's sponsored by the same guy that puts on the Spain shows. And I'm like, I'm so, I was so confused, but yeah, it was uh, the Cali pro, <laughs> which I think is ridiculous to put a California pro. Like we have the New York pro in like Florida and stuff, but that was like, you know, there was restrictions. There's reasons for that. Uh, okay, we got a bunch of questions here. So first one is going to be, why do bodybuilders eat sushi as a cheat meal? What's the secret? Rice and meat. Beans. Yeah. Beans. Salt and rice. 
Do you, do you guys all eat sushi? You guys big fans of sushi? Oh yeah, I am. Yeah, Nate, Nate, um, Nate, sushi in America. On. Yeah, yeah, that... I eat sushi. Blue, blue. I used to coach with Blue, and uh, that was his main cheat meal. Was uh, you know, like he would say forty pieces of sushi. Uh, none of that fried stuff. None of the. Uh, what is that cheese? That that cream cheese? No, nah, we wouldn't get none of yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. pretty much just like rice and, and fish, a little seaweed. Yeah. Um, he would always low sodium, so we didn't blow up. We don't blow up on that. Forty pieces of sushi is like a pretty substantial meal, too. You know, like oh yeah, I could never do it. <laughs> it's a good amount of food, man. I'll be know? sick like yeah. later, like laying down, like man. <laughs> There's a video when I, I, me and me and uh, Morgan McDonald, we did like an arm day. It's on my YouTube channel. We did an arm day, then we went to all you can eat sushi. And you know, me with the gut health and the being conscious of that, I, I get my I got 30 or 40 pieces of, of sushi, and it's just the uh sashimi on the rice, and he's getting everything else, <laughs> you know, it's a completely different contrast. But I, I think it's just it's it's an easy thing to be like, hey, go and get sushi. You like you said, Nate, you can like actually give okay, get 30 pieces or get 20 pieces or get 40 pieces, like it's something that you can actually like calculate to some degree. Yeah. Um, but then also it's like, if you're in the off season and you just want to like stuff your face, you're going to get your money's worth. So I think that's, in my opinion, that's where the secret always was. Is if I'm going to pay like $35 and get all you can eat and sit there for like two hours and just mow down calories after calories, like you go any other restaurant, it's going to cost you hundreds of dollars. So they hate, they hate when body loads come in, eh? You know, they're like, they're like, they're like no, 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 the kitchen's closed. <laughs> in Australia, yeah. after the um, Arnold Classic, we, um, all the strong men, so we went to just a buffet. It was me, it was me, Aaron Polites, and his wife, I think we went there. And um, all the strong men, there, so I was like, Brian Shaw, Eddie Hall, all those guys at a table at an all you can eat place. I'm just like, they would be hating them so yes. much brian shaw yes, i went man. and said hi to brian shaw and he was standing there and his plate was so heavily stacked but this was like the second plate he was going back for so i'm like okay so you had at least you eat at least two of those i'm like then you haven't dessert aren't you? like you know you're you're getting more and the place wasn't that expensive you know what i mean like probably it's australia so it's going to be reasonably expensive no matter what but yeah it's um it's funny because we don't have the sushi as well like you guys do like you guys have in america like when dave palumbo came here he was a bit confused because we have you can get sushi here with beef in it chicken all sorts like any meat sort of thing you want you can get in sushi and dave was like that's not sushi he's like it's just fish raw fish it's not this is this isn't sushi he's like, it's not real sushi oh yeah and we don't have the all you can eat places either much like most like we have the sushi train sort of places and stuff but it's it's reasonably expensive I'm trying to, there's this one like i don't know he's not really a bodybuilder but he's kind of like uh like just a freak on youtube and he goes in and he does like these like he just like eats like restaurant food like all the time and he goes in for like 200 200 pieces of sushi and he just like he takes a whole bunch of insulin before he goes. I wish I could remember his fucking name. He's that's like, the that that's the dude who's uh, on five percent nutrition. What's his name, bro? Yeah, yeah, it's escaping me right now. But man, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Five percent nutrition sushi. Yeah, like he's such a fucking freak. But so anyway, smashes Slim and goes about? smashes the yeah. sushi. Oh, the the Russian guy, the Russian guy. I forgot yeah. uh, something with an I in the in the beginning. Uh, right? Ilya, Ilya Golem. Ilya Golem, Golem. Yeah. Ilya Golem, yeah, that's a name, man. Yes, yeah, yeah. He's well, crazy. when you see him, you'll understand. No, oh, dude, if you type in oh. Ilya, then the first thing that comes up is Ilya Golem sushi. So, this this guy further to yeah. the point. I was watching. Does I he look like? This does guy. he look like an Ilya Golem? He looks. He's yeah, like he does for sure. Dog. Look at him. Yeah. Where's the sushi one? I don't know. He eats like sixteen hundred calories, like every time he goes out to eat. Why do he look like a different person? Like there's some of those photos, he looked like. I suppose some of these are like AI. Yeah. No, dude. There's there's no trick to what he does when it comes to the sushi. He'll he'll sit there and just eat and eat and then. Oh. But that'll be a meal earlier in the day too. Then he'll go and have like sixteen ounces of beef and stuff. Like it's just. No, no, no. He so tells he tells you the trick. He tells you the trick. He does a bunch of insulin before he goes. He gets there. He's already sweating and like he's just sweating the whole time. That's the trick. He's going. He's going <laughs> hyper when he arrives. 
<laughs> what a trick. Great well, trick. I don't, I don't know what you want. <laughs> Eat or die. Eat Holy shit. Yeah, exactly. Eat or die. <laughs> I ha- yeah. This sushi better have this rice better have some sugar in it. Uh, I don't know. He, he's a oh, monster. Well, that- Either way, like he, he's like, okay, yeah. I'm 400 pounds. Now we're gonna push to 420. <laughs> yeah, yeah. True rich people. That style, right? Yeah. Whatever it takes. Playing bro. Russian roulette. <laughs> oh yeah. Bigger by the day. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, he kept it going. On the other podcast, we were talking about like some of the best times, like back in the day of bodybuilding. I remember uh, I had one, I had one buddy. He's like, "Okay, let's go for all you can eat sushi. We're gonna slam a bunch of insulin. We're gonna slam a bunch of GH right after our leg workout. And go eat sushi. I was like, yeah, we're gonna get huge, bro. Oh man, like, <laughs> good days, it's, good good days when you're just so ignorant. You, you just believe anything. Uh, you know what I mean. The thing is, you'd be gaining man. muscle doing that stuff. You know what I mean? It might not be the most efficient way, or you might be gaining extra fat that you don't need to gain, you know, yeah. doing it in certain ways. But I mean, it still works. You know what I mean? Like, I remember me and my mates were like, yeah, like beef, that's the most anabolic sort of like protein. So we went to, I remember going to the supermarket. We didn't, couldn't even drive cars back then, you know, we weren't even at that age. So we were like 16 or something. Let's go to the supermarket, buy all this beef, we're like bread, carbs, sick. So we just made all these toasted sandwiches just packed full of beef that were like this thick. Yep. And we were just eating them all day, training. And we we're like stretching's good for, you know, muscle gains and stuff and, and reducing injury. So we'd stretch for half an hour. Like this is shit we do on weekends when we have no job, nothing to do, you know. Do you guys know yeah. uh do you, do you know the king of diet? No. No. King of diet. Why is he not coming up? Did he get banned? Did he block me? He, he probably blocked you, dude. No, he he wouldn't. Who is this guy? We're friends. Um, he's like <laughs> you were you so were you friends. Bought. You were you were. He's pretty popular. His name is uh, Fernando Teresca. Now he's right here. I don't know why he was coming up. Oh, the the king of diet. My bad. So here's his Instagram. Uh, he's got a couple million followers here. Uh, and I, I met him at Pure Muscle. He's a really really nice guy. But he does kind of like these stunts, basically. Like he goes. Okay, well, this is absolutely disgusting. Like he's he's all about like eating like a ridiculous amount of mayonnaise. Um, but he basically what he does, like his his shtick is that he goes into restaurants and he just like almost not abuses them, but he kind of like pushes the boundaries of like it he basically freaks them out. Like he orders like 25,000 calories and they they all they bring him all the food, and he just sits there and eats it, and then he orders more, and then he asks for like more mayonnaise and he just keeps asking for more and more mayonnaise and apparently he's been kicked out of like all you can eat pizza places just because he just sits there forever and just keeps on eating um i don't know i mean i don't, oh I don't know how God, much... what are they gonna do what <laughs> yeah I, I don't know how much of it is real and how much of it is for this for the camera but um you know it works for him and he also kind of <laughs> is he gonna eat that <laughs> yeah, it's... Oh, oh my god ash what the ash fuck? for a second he does this all the time. Like, uh, I could, I could kind of eat that right Ash, now. I'm come so look hungry, at what though. this guy's eating. Dude. You think you could? You think you could? Yeah, that? right. Yeah. You think you think you? Could I eat personally that? dip my fries in mayo you when I eat them. Eat you think you think I could? I eat can't that. eat yeah. that. No, I like the fry sauce with like ketchup and mayonnaise. But you like, you could eat all that. Yeah, you're not you're wrong, mate. So this so actually wrong. grosses me out a lot less right now than it did. I think you could eat. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, let's go. If you if you eat like that, what's what's your son's name? That's what you look like. Ashton. Ashton. What's up, Ashton? So he does. Oh, Xavier says, what's up, dude? Three pounds. Hi, Ashton. That's, <laughs> <right>. go, Ashton. <laughs> That's so good. My he son, is, gets, but he's not. Go, far, go, go follow our host, Rules Gaming, on YouTube. Right, dude? All right. <laughs> Knuckles. <Yeah. laughs> does he think it's cool that his dad's like a, got like a YouTube channel and stuff? Like he's like, yeah, hey, dad's on YouTube, you know, like sort of like a semi celebrity thing, especially to kids. Yeah, oh, he used to he true. used to like poke his head around corners when I'd be like I do podcasts and he'd be like, hmm, hmm. I'd be like, dude, come on, right? Yeah, he lo- he loves yeah. it, man. Yeah, look 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 at what yeah. he does. He he goes and just orders like the most ridiculous amount of food at like all these restaurants. Oh, making money, man. He's making money. He's, oh, he's got a he's got a good uh, a little good business because it's king of diet. It's like you want to learn how to eat like this and still get shredded. It's like well, that's pretty smart, man. Dude, uh, that that was 
that was actually a, a thing, especially back in the day with like the cheat meal sort of like almost came like a cheat meal culture. You know what I mean? And then the rock was doing these epic cheat meals like every Sunday and he'd talk about it. So it led to sort of normal people that might either go to the gym or maybe even people that do like one home workout a week to be like, yeah, a cheat meal, you know, every weekend sort of thing. So sort of now, like it's kind of gone full right? circle because now a lot of the pro bodybuilders are like, I don't want to work with a coach that gives me cheat meals. I want to work with a coach that just strict all the time. Like everything, it's everything funny how works, right? Circle, right? Suffer, whatever works for you. Yeah, whatever if you're not suffering, bro, you're not no cheat meal. Yeah, <laughs> we but all there's know. levels to cheat meals too. Yeah, you know? we all there's know. You can get because... you can get shredded for a show eating cheat meals. You can get shredded for a show not eating cheat meals. Just which one do you want to do? Yeah, yeah. Well, my last prep depends on where you started. You know, there's so many factors, man. Yeah, my last prep, I did cheat meals and. I thought it worked well, but it, it was very different compared to what some people's definition of a cheat meal is. You know, like my early day cheat meals were messed up. Eat for, you know, oh, start at 6 p.m., go to midnight and stuff as much as I can and whatever I want. You know, that's one thing. And then the last time I prepped was like, okay, I'm going to go out for like a burger and not like a dirty burger, like one where it's actual like chicken breast or like ground fed beef. And it's like salt, you know, it's not like dripping and, and, I think burgers in Australia are slightly less greasy. Like they're slightly cleaner, I'd say, than America in general. Like, I don't know, it's just a different sort of... Bad I think percentage we got, is lower? I'd say so, yeah. But there are still like, we have the American burger places which have those like more greasy burgers. Like it's wrapped in, you know, like paper and the paper's all wet from grease. You know, we've got those places too. But you can choose places that aren't as bad. Like the place I go, it's, they say healthy burgers, but they're, you know, sort of in between. But um, I'm going to have you. burgers and then eat something else afterwards and eat a decent amount of food, but it's not all bad food, you know? And I feel yeah. so much different the next day compared to having just a dirty ass cheat meal. And after those big, huge, dirty, forced food down cheat meals, the next yeah. day I'm craving, man. It makes that oh, Sunday dude. after horrible, horrible. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know if he knows Xavier, but I, I suffer from bulimia nervosa for like 10 years from 18 to 20. Yeah, I, I heard. Us. Yeah. And so, you know, when I, whenever I would work with like, like, for example, one of my first coaches that I wanted to work with was Scott Abel. And he kind of has, I don't know if you guys know Scott Abel. He's kind of like an old school bodybuilder. He's a, he was a pro back in the day, sponsored by Muscle Tech. I know the name. Yeah. But either way, yeah, um, it, it was kind of like he had like the, the methodology of like skip loading. Like, you know, it's like you just you just like super like kill your calories, like 800 calories, 1000 calories all week. And then you eat like 8000 calories on Saturday and Sunday. And like, that's kind of how you get ready for shows. So as soon as I started like linking up with those guys, I was like, holy crap, this, this is going to get me into huge trouble. Right. So I was kind of knowing the way that I was I, from the beginning, when I started doing my preps, I was always like anti cheat meal, but that was just because I couldn't handle it psychologically without having this, like this fucking disorder come back and going into the food addiction thing. Right. Yeah. So that that's where it's like, you have to make up in your own mind. Is this, is it harming or, or is this, um, helping or harming me, right? So, it, like, you, you can get there either way, but if you're super food focused and that's like all I can think about is my cheating all the end of the week, like, that's probably not a good way to be sustaining a prep because you're just so food focused. Versus now, I feel like I don't really think about food because I just, I know what I got to eat. I don't have to think twice about it. Versus I'm like, oh man, like I can't wait to get the most of that cheat meal. And then afterwards I'm going to keep eating. And it's like, well, then now I got to like do some extra cardio. And it's like, nah, that's just not for me. Right. But other, a lot of my clients, it's like, they just do it and they just move right on. And lots of people can just do that and move right on. Right. But you can kind of pick up the telltale signs because people will try to like, oh, go get a burger and fries. Like, all right, well, uh, can I get a dessert afterwards? Uh, can I get uh can I have cheese and bacon on my burger? It's like, bro, I just, I, I told you what the plan was. You know what I mean? Just stick to that and don't ask for more. Cause then when you start thinking, what can I get away with? What can I get away with? Then you start running into that food focus, which is not going to help your progress as a bodybuilder, yeah. right? Right. At least yeah. for context, and that game is right? endless. It's that endless. Is yeah. Endless. Cause you're never yeah. going to, that's the problem is you're never going to satisfy your hunger. You're going to be, for, at least for me, I would still be hungry even when my stomach was out to here and I couldn't breathe. And I'd be like, mm, I could probably get a couple more snacks in. And then I'd be like, oh no. Like, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I can't sleep. Oh, now. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the thing that like ho- hopefully they learn because it's like once yeah. you do it the hard way like that, it's like man, it's either heartburn or like you said, you can't breathe and it's like your digestion's messed up the next day. Like it's it's not even worth it. Uh, I, me- I remember one see- time after uh, winning my first super heavyweight overall, and I was just so happy. And we went to the Mandarin afterwards. Everybody's like, Mister Ontario's here, Mister Ontario. I'm like, watch how many plates I can eat. I'm gonna eat every eat more than everybody. Eight <laughs> plates down. Then we go back to the the Airbnb. Everybody wanted to go out after. Like, yeah, we're gonna go party after. I'm like, I, there's no way. I'm so full. So then I'm just sitting on the couch and I'm like, I'm like eating ice cream. And then I'm going back to like snacks that are like salty, going back salty, sweet, salty, sweet. And I just slowly slid off the couch. Like I was just slowly sliding off the couch. So I was on the floor on my back and I couldn't get off of the floor until 4 a.m. the next day. Like I was just <laughs> We've all done it. Damn, that's a cool story. <laughs> Dave Palumbo, I talked to him about the bulimia and the colitis and stuff, and he was like, "That you you put so much in that eventually your body wanted to get all of it out." And I'm like, mm, yeah. kind of an interesting perspective." Makes sense. But yeah, we'll, we'll move yeah. On. I mean, it is gonna process at some point. Yeah, it's definitely know? a learning learning lesson in discipline, man. Because you know, it's like once you get into that like addictive. Uh, circle like a negative uh cycle it's like oh man it's just so so overwhelming but yeah dude i i found when when i prepped uh being a bit older and maybe being busier as well i don't know if that helped or what but just the the level of cravings and stuff in the day just wasn't near the same like compared to what it had been in the past when i'd prepped like when i was younger it's like i really struggle with it the last times I prepped, I didn't struggle at all. The only difference, differences I made, I guess, was maybe like bulking up some of my meals. Like we've got, I don't know if you guys have it in America or not, but we've got these potatoes that are lower in carb, just like, I don't know, just how they've, I don't know. Oh yeah, we got, we got, lots of, we got, like, we got a low carb Canada and they got like all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah, but these are legit yeah, potatoes this, like they grow on the ground. Canadian like, beef, this, the, this, this, this is Canadian beef. You got to get it right. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but I would have like, we've got like kangaroo. So what I'd do is I'd do like kangaroo mince, which is like super lean, but it's like red meat. So it's slow digesting. I would cook kangaroo mince. I would get like frozen spinach, chuck that in, get green beans, chuck it in there as well. And cook these things. It's called in Australia spud light because the amount of carbs is probably 40% less than normal potatoes. So I cook those up in the air fryer, just like a little bit of oil spray on there and just like seasoning. And my meal would be like a, huge plate at night i mean like yeah. mammoth and i would use a tiny bit of ketchup and just some mustard and it's like low sugar ketchup so the meal had like 45 to 50 grams of carbs and probably i don't know maybe 50 grams of protein but it was enormous like i would eat it and be like bloated like oh i'm too full and i'm prepping i'm like this is the best so then <laughs> yeah, i just wait yeah. you know 40 minutes 40 minutes so i wasn't like you know lay, laying down that in my stomach straight away and then go to sleep and i'd sleep perfect dude and then through the day what I'd do is just drink like herbal teas, like peppermint tea. I'd even go to the gym because I'd hate to train if I started to feel hungry. I'd just drink hot tea and I'd just keep my body hot and I'd just feel like I'd get a pump quicker. Like I'd already be heated up going into the gym. I don't know. It just it just made my prep so much easier. I'm like, well, it's the best I ever looked. It's the leanest I ever got. So I'm like, I'm just going to do the exact carbon copy next time I prep, you know? Try to anyway. Dude, I, I love kangaroo, man. I, I've, I've gotten it here. It's, it's more expensive here, obviously, because we have to ship it all the way from australia but that stuff's good yeah, it's, it's pretty cheap here like if you get the kangaroo yeah. mints it's um uh we use kilos so like 2.2 pounds yeah is about eight dollars american yeah 2.2 it, pounds. It, here here it's probably uh it's probably like roughly like 20 20 bucks uh canadian for like a kilo or, or even less so i don't eat it often oh, yeah. yeah yeah it's cheaper out there <laughs> um, oh this is a good question here so, <laughs> If you guys were in the WWE, what would be your walkout music? <laughs> oh, Ooh. like, like a tough question. It's a tough question. WWE. That is a tough question. Yeah. WWF. Like, yeah, go. WWF. Yeah. Oh yeah, but yeah. back in the day, WWF. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know, man. That's that's such a tough question. I'm I'm trying to open my Spotify now. My but the music I listen to now, I I, I don't know. I'm just not that personality to walk out to anything, man. I try to. I don't know. I feel like you'd try to make it funny. I'd probably just use like similar music that I would walk out to, like for my posing routine, like just 
I like the epic music. Like one of my favorite songs right now is Desolation by Tom Player. Just like epic. Like you just like you feel like there's a beat when you take a step and you just like come out and you're just like, whoa, let's go. It should be something like that. Yeah. yeah. Cause the year of music would be great. Yeah. You know, you know what you know what I I I did I I know what I would use. So there's a band called Austrian Death Machine, and it was it's done by a guy named Tim Lambesis, who made like several albums just about Arnold Schwarzenegger quotes from movies and shit. That's all it is. But it's like super heavy metal, and he actually redid the Terminator Two theme in in heavy metal, and it's just an instrumental. But that's what I would come out to. What about 100%. what about the the intro for uh, the Grudge by Tool? Just that intro beat. Uh, oh yeah, 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 man! That Dude, would be I good love too, tool, man. I love tool. Yeah, you, see, that's oh, what you're in saying. good company. We're real friends. I knew it. Yeah. Yep. One of my mates he posed to um. Oh, I'm trying to think which tool song it was. They all sort of mixed together a bit. It's uh, it, it, it's like he started it like it was like six minutes into the song where it's like duh, 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 it's like duh, 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 duh. and he's like posing that and I was like that's 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 when I became a fan of tool. This was back when I was like oh. seventy. Uh, 16 or 17 years old or something. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, you're in good company here. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good band. My, my my dad actually got me on tour when I was young too. And that's why I love it so much. Kind of like that nostalgic. And they've, they've been, they've been playing good music since then. And even till now, the music is still good. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're awesome. I changed my mind. I pick a tool song. Yeah. See, yeah. Zade, <laughs> Zade, Zade, you have to, you, Zade has to walk out to something related to Wade. Yeah, uh, Snoop Dogg. Uh, Dre, Snoop Dogg. No, you know it's funny because I was thinking about Terminator theme song. It's the same one I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, oh, man. man, it's badass. Yeah. What about Not that? that I ever seen myself as a wrestler to begin with, but you know, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I, I don't see myself as a wrestler at all. You know. Forgot about Dre. About Zayn could pull it off. Zayn, I reckon you could actually pull it off. You'd you'd have to lean into like the. European Undertaker type dude or something, and just look angry. I, I, think, I, I did I like think the fact that some of them wear masks, you know. So that was yeah, cool. Zayn could wear a, ma a mask. Yeah, uh, Zayn's get, get into the cool. WWE. I'm convinced. I think he could. I think <laughs> Zayn, you, you could do um, forgot about Dre, but then remix. You'd be like, forgot about Zayn. No, forgot about Zayn. You'd show up and be like, yeah, I'm fucking here. Can't forget about me, <laughs> yeah. motherfuckers. Yeah, exactly. Walk out smoking a joint. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. First what would you make your own wrestling pick? league? What would you pick? Man? Yeah, I don't. I don't got. I, I would, it's some kind of rap music, some kind of West Coast rap, uh, Kendrick, like like you said, some Dre or Snoop or something like that. Yeah, um, try to go with the West Coast theme because I'm from LA. <laughs> Anything yeah. Kendrick would be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. especially some of that. Even Mad City would be a good one. You know what I mean? Like that would get that would get people fired up right away because everybody would recognize that song. Nathan, like your cap and everything, and like you're like like wearing a black t shirt, like the cap and everything. You look like you're like a producer off straight out of Compton or something. Like you know what I mean? Like the black cap with the white writing and uh, everything. Yeah, I'm like, gee. yeah, yeah, I like that. Uh, <laughs> it's a good. He's look, on man. set right now. Yeah, the yeah. Gray matches everything. Yeah. <laughs> let's uh, let's do it's one more. We'll white hair. One more, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, all right. I uh, I really appreciate you guys coming on. By the way, it really means a lot, man. Of course, oh, man. Man. I, I know what it's like, love, like doing it myself especially yeah no it was it was fun getting to know you guys today and hanging out and stuff so yeah i really just want to say i appreciate it but anyways um we got one more here bodybuilding and balancing life relationships health your best advice let's start with nate you know father of four and how how do you balance your life with bodybuilding and what would you say your best advice is for someone who's trying to do the same I mean, for, for the main the main thing with bodybuilding is eating. So it's like, as long as you have a structured eating plan, you're fine. Um, other than that, like I put everything else first. I put my job first. I put my family first. Bodybuilding is like the last thing I'm, I'm concerned about. Uh, I mean, because really, you're training for an hour, hour and a half, five days a week. <laughs> you know, during prep, you have like a little bit of cardio. Maybe you get up to two hours, and that's what do you got? Three hours a day it's it's not too much time in a 24 hour where you got to dedicate to bodybuilding so i would say like structure your eating and then uh 
put stuff first that 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 that's more valuable because i mean for me i don't make money bodybuilding i'm I'm like a lower tier bodybuilder maybe if i was a, a higher tier one but i i still think you, you kind of got to put your family first and, and your job where you're making the most money <laughs> yeah what do you do for your day job Absolutely. nate i'm a sales engineer for an internet company so i just design like computer networks and stuff like that nice nice yeah what about what about you zade how do you balance your life with bodybuilding? You know, you've been talking about how you're trying to save money and, and work towards buying a house. So how do you manage that with bodybuilding and how you have to spend the money on bodybuilding? How do you do that? Uh, to be honest, dude, this is kind of like the area where I'm trying to work on because all I do, I all I did during my 20s and being a teenager up until now, at 32, is bodybuilding and just earn uh, knowledge about bodybuilding and just experience with training people. So this is the area where I need to actually put bodybuilding aside and focus on the balance. And But it starts with uh, having a long-term goal, I think, a long-term plan for yourself. Uh, if you want to, like, if you have good potential and you are very young in your 20s and your 30s and you want to be a pro bodybuilder or you are a pro bodybuilder and you want to be taken seriously, you have to go all in. Because if you don't go all in, you're going to be uh, last place for a long, long time, in my opinion. You know, So you're either going to do damage or you won't at all. Uh, and for that, you need to understand what your weaknesses are and, if, uh, and then just basically try to improve on those. But as for the balance thing, dude, you have to put your family first, especially get, uh, get like your partner needs to be someone who's understanding about your lifestyle. You know, this together is going to help you create a balance, putting your, your partner and your family first, not the show or the bodybuilding preps all the time as the number one priority. And like I said, just a long-term plan and uh, should take you a long place. But I'm trying to figure it out myself, to be honest. So I think if, if we focus on the non-bodybuilding things uh, that you can do with your friends, maybe coworkers and family, that should be bringing some type of balance to you. And just like Nate said, you're always going to be ending up training two hours out of your day, max. But the rest <clears> of the day, what are you doing? You know, you yeah. should focus on getting some balance there. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. That's good. What about you, Kenzin? I know with your work, you work a lot. You still get it in with the gym. Got kids. Got a family. Got to hold it down. How do you find balance? Sure, man. Um <sighs> Sometimes I feel like I don't have it. And I think that that's normal. You know, I think that a lot of people feel that way. Life is life is tough, whether you're a professional bodybuilder or someone that just wants to make gains in the gym, but you still have, you know, the family, you have the job, you have everything that you need to look after. I mean, I've got three dogs, a house and everything on top of all that, right? But there are a couple of things that have worked for me when it comes to making particular progress. Like even take the fact that, you know, my, my, uh, my YouTube channel, I am up consistently at five o'clock every single day on weekends, because I typically get Monday to Friday, unless we get an emergency call for diving or something. I do videos from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. typically, because everybody else in my house gets up around eight or nine kind of thing. So by the time everybody's up, I'm already done my YouTube for the day. You know, when competitions come around, you prioritize things. You can't get every competition in, so I have to consider that. But anyway, that's as a YouTuber. But getting up early is definitely one of the keys for success when it comes to finding that balance. If you want to focus on yourself, you can do that at a time that is the least inconvenient for everybody else around you by getting up before anybody else. Whatever it takes to make it work, it is a serious, serious asset to what I do. Even, even through the week, I'll get up and train, which is not ideal for everybody especially if you're trying to be a professional bodybuilder. But I'm just saying, if you're trying to find that balance, even just as a person looking to make, you know, progress in training, well, it might be a good avenue for you, right? Getting up early is key, absolutely key. And after that, like I said, priorities. Um, if it comes to if it comes to your training in, in evenings, well, figure out what works for you, what works for your family and uh, it, Though, 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 that really is, if I could have one, number one, though, 
dude, it's getting up early. Like yeah. it can, it can completely be a time when nobody else is there to bother you or you don't have to focus on anybody else, you know, and you can have more time in order to focus on the other aspects of your life, family and things like that. You're more present and that's very, very important as well. Right. Uh, yeah. Being able to Excellent do things. Advice. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It, it, it really is key. Now, if you're also looking to do something when it comes to, um, you know, within bodybuilding, part of it is building a business online as a potential, right? Well, who doesn't have one? Yeah, You're probably not using it to the full extent that you could. And it is relatively inconvenient to the people around you. Don't spend all day on it, but there are portions where you can, you can potentially look at that. I made a thumbnail today for our podcast in between dives when I was at work. We had 25 minutes in between the dives. So I uploaded a couple of screenshots to my, to my OneDrive. I took the screenshots. I made it in a mobile app and the thing looks fucking great. So utilize the utilize the resources that you do have around you and get up early nice man yeah really good. dude, dude yeah. I, i've literally you, you made so many good points there and you know like being a parent and like when i've been at my very busiest with that it's like you are forced into efficiency like if you fall behind if you want to keep your bodybuilding if you want to keep like you if you want to keep your training and you want to keep your family and your job and do youtube that's a lot of shit to fit in and, and like you said, you've got dogs as well. Plus when the snow comes, you're shoveling the snow and then you shoveled, shoveled your neighbor's snow. Yeah. And dude, from what you're saying with all that sort of stuff and from what I know of you, it's it's very admirable. And we are like most people that listen to this podcast are going to look at the pros and that's who they're going to look up to. But I think there's like dads out there that watch as well. that would be like, oh, that that's cool. You know, like, oh yeah, he's fitting it in. Then I can do it because we all need to see, for the most part, we all need to see someone else at least do something for us to have the confidence to go, oh, that does work. You know what I mean? And then when you do it and prove it to yourself, that's like the most positive like reinforcement. And that's something I've realized, man, over the last few years, going through a few things in my personal life is that that structure of bodybuilding, while we always, always say about things like bodybuilding, oh, like about people talk about the negatives of it and this and that and the drugs and that, man, it adds, adds a lot of structure to my life. Just the training, the meals, if you work for yourself as well, it structures your day, you know, as long as you schedule it and do it sort of around the time or the time you're saying, then it's going to structure your life. And then, you know, you make that fit in around your family, you know, because if you actually schedule it out in your day and put it in your calendar, if you're working for yourself, you go, shit, I've, I've only realistically got, you know, if I want to fit all this stuff in, I've only got six and a half hours that I can really work today on my actual job job that makes money. Or, you know, you sort of start to figure stuff out or, I only really got four hours before I need to go to bed, you know, because then otherwise I've got into the thing where I'll just stay up until whatever's done. And then you wreck the next day and then you just get this bad pattern. So man, it's a credit to you how much you do and how much you get in. And, and same as Nathan as well, man, like, like you having four kids as well, like that is, and, and I love what you said as well, because you're saying it's about fam bodybuilding sort of comes last for you, you know? And it's like, well, that, that's a guy with his head screwed on because yeah, if you're not making bank from bodybuilding or a decent amount of money to support your family, if bodybuilding was coming for first over your family, and honestly, there's guys that go to the gym that don't even compete where bodybuilding will come first. So I think, it, man, I think it's cool to be a pro and be able to say, hey, bodybuilding isn't first on my priority list. Yeah, when, right. I, when I first really got out of uh, when I first got out of college, I was I was I was like, hey, I played college football at Utah State. I played inside oh, linebacker. Cool. Then I ended up getting hurt, and I, I worked in strength and conditioning. And then I, I got into bodybuilding and um, I ended up getting my wife, my wife then uh, pregnant uh, with twin boys. So I was just like, I was getting ready for the LA championship, but I was just like, man, I, I just got to tap out and, you know, focus on my career. I didn't really have a real job. I was building websites and, you know, just impromptu work. Um, so I just got a real job and I started working for a cable company. Then I worked my way up. To how, being how, a old were you? How, how old were you when you first, had your first kids? uh i want to say how are they they're they're 17 right now and i'm 41 so 24 ish or something 24 yeah, 24 yeah, yeah 24 
Yeah, Man, that's, it that's was, why it was two right really, off the bat. Really it was two right off the bat. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, you know how they tell you, like, oh man, you can't get your girl pregnant on gear. It was like, yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> you're, more, you're more active too, you know, that first cycle, you know, you're ready to yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. You might be four times less likely, but yeah, if you're doing it four times the amount of time, it's still just as likely. <laughs> yeah. Now, there's, there's good, now, there's good advice. Good odds. Yeah, so I, I took a break. I took a long break until I was 35. And uh, once I got my career, under the wraps and then i end up going through a divorce and, and i try to figure out something to do with my life like and not go the wrong direction then i was like let me get back into bodybuilding let me see if i could get in shape one more time and uh here i am now six years later i, I love yeah, all the yeah. points that you guys made you guys made all really good points and just taking like pieces from each one of them you know like having like a long-term goal for me is like i wanted to be a pro bodybuilder making money i'm doing that now but i've been bodybuilding for 15 years and only the last two years have I been actually making money from bodybuilding and not even from bodybuilding. It's just because I have a business now where I coach people and I train people. But when I started getting into competitive bodybuilding, I was 16 years old. So I was still in high school and I had a nighttime job as well. I worked at a restaurant. So I'd wake up in the morning, I'd do my cardio. Actually, at the time I was training twice a day because I didn't, I didn't understand what cardio was. I just wake up, wait, train, go to school, wait, train again after school. Then I would go work my shift. And then I did that for a couple of years. Then when I actually got into like actually like seriously competing, then uh, I was in university. So I was like at the national level by the time I was 20, it was a little bit different back then, but uh, junior nationals, I was waking up and I was doing my cardio. Like you guys said, waking up early, five, 6 AM, getting to school, going to school all day. And it was the same routine that I would train after school. If I had like classes that were at different times, like I would go and train at the university gym, which I hated doing, but you had to do it. So that's what I would do. Then I would go to my nighttime job at the restaurant. And then, you know, I would, just, I would eat when I had to, like you guys said, like the eating, it's not like you have to be home to eat. You can just bring all your food. And what I would do is actually, when I was working at the restaurants, I would always be working on the grill. I'd always try to get onto the grill so I could cook extra steak, extra chicken. And then at the end of the night, I would throw it all in my bag, take it home. And I have like my meal prep done. And I would do that for a number, number of years. And I just eventually like doing that over time. It's like, there was even times where I had to work two jobs. Like in the summertime, I would work 12 hours at a restaurant or do split shifts and I have to train in between. And I hated that. I remember how much I hated it, hated it so much, but I knew. And the one thing is that kept me going is I want to bodybuild. I want to bodybuild so bad. So that was my motivation. I'm working to bodybuild. I'm going to school so I can get the education so I can learn how to eventually help people with bodybuilding. And that was always my focus, the long-term goal of being a bodybuilder. So that was what I was working for. I wasn't trying to make money off bodybuilding. I spent all my money on bodybuilding because that was what was motivating me to do. And then eventually it's like I turned pro and I, okay, now I got my, my online business, but I'm not making any money because nobody knows who I am. So I'm still trying to go through these jobs and I've been fired from jobs and I've quit jobs just because they didn't line up with what I was trying to do. There was one time I talked about on a previous podcast where I had booked off a week to go fly out to Nova Scotia and compete in the nationals. This was in, I think, 2015 or 2014. And my boss calls me, like, hey, I need you. And I was like, no, dude, I had booked this week off. And he said, well, listen, I got a restaurant to run. And I said, I'm not coming in. I'm going to my show. And I just quit on the spot. I didn't even give him my two weeks notice because that was what I needed to do. But as soon as I got back, I'm like, hey, man, I can cook anywhere. I'm not worried about getting a job and making 17 or 18 bucks. I just go to another restaurant, start working again, working at GNC. Dude, I got fired from GNC for selling people fish oil because my boss was like, well, this person said they wanted to get lean. So you gave them fish oil. It's an oil. It's fat. It's going to make them fat. I was like, whatever. I'm just, I'm not focused on anything else except my own journey. And I'm doing what I think is right. So you fit in with, like you said, Dave, like that, that long-term goal. And like you said, Nathan, like you just make it happen. The meals, the training, it's not that much of your day. You have so much more of your day besides just bodybuilding. But I remember when I'm going through those split shifts and like, man, like I, I'm absolutely hating the fact that I have to go to this job, but loving the fact that I get to train later. And I just be like, man, I can't wait to train later. Can't wait to train later. That's what kept me going. And now I feel so grateful that I can live the life like this. And even now, like I wake up 6 a.m. and I'm doing my posing and then I'm going to the gym and then I'm doing my abs, my cardio, my tanning and my breath work and my meditation. And I come home and I eat 
And then I'm going to the gym and I'm training clients and I come home and I eat and I go and I train and I come home and I'm on podcasts. We're just on podcasts for four hours straight. And my girl's like, <laughs> are you going to come hang out with me? Like, you know what I mean? It's like right now, as soon as we sign off, I'm going to go and spend some time with her. And maybe we, we only get- what I'm going to do. Yeah. yeah, like by the end of the night, maybe you only get an hour and a half to actually relax. But really, would you want to spend your day any other way? I ask myself that. Yeah. Even on the days where yeah. I'm like, I feel a little bit overwhelmed with how much I have to do today. But I'm like, but I'm not, I'm not at the restaurant anymore. I'm doing what I wanted to do. And that's what keeps me grounded is just having that gratitude for where I started and where I am now. Yeah. So, Dude, I, I, I am, uh, yeah, a lot of men, a lot of good points in there. And filling your time as well. Like, yes, you can take time to chill. You can still have time for your things that you enjoy. Cause I got into actually a really unhealthy thing with work at one stage. I was working for a supplement company out here in Australia. I was doing some stuff that I enjoyed. Don't get me wrong, but I was at a huge commute as well. So I was driving an hour and 10 minutes to work, then I'd work and I'd stay over time. Cause it was sort of promised to me a bit that like, you know, when we take off, you know, you'll be looked after. So I was like, yeah, well, I'll, and I wanted to, you know, I got excited about the company. So I was staying extra sometimes. And then I'd drive an out of a gym, train as quick as I could, then drive home. And that was like another half an hour. And it was like, I would have 20 minutes at night to chill. And that's my normal thing. Unless I wasn't training that night, which was one night a week. So like, and then it would get to weekends and then I'd go to, you know, my girlfriend's family's house and hang out with her like little sister. And then, you know, we'd maybe have like the next day we'd food prep and then it's just repeat. It was just, I remember having a weekend or like I had some days off, like public holidays. I was like, what do I do to enjoy myself? I have no clue. Like, I was just like, I don't have something to do right now. What do I do? <laughs> like, it was weird. I'm like, that's, I, that's, that's, that's where it goes too far. Yeah. But I, I think for the most part, going, gets going the other way too, it's like, there was a period of time I was on my second year of university where I had seen a lot of other Canadian bodybuilders. Um, well, not a lot of other Canadian bodybuilders. Actually, I looked up to Regan and I was like, hey, you know, Regan just, you know, he's like doing like full-time bodybuilding, he's doing full-time YouTube and, you know, he quit school. And so I thought that's what I had to do. I'm like, okay, so two years in, I'm like, fuck it. I'm not going back. I'm just going to do full-time bodybuilding. And I realized that without that balance to actually keep me grounded, to keep my mind going, all I did was I got lazy and then I started partying. I was about to say and that. then I had like two or three years where I was just completely lost partying and I got into addiction. I got into all sorts of shit that I wouldn't have if I just stayed on my path. And then, so it actually took me from 20, uh, when I started school, I started my university in 2012 and I didn't finish and get my degree until 2020. So in, you know, and I did one year uh, diploma and then four years university. So it took me basically eight years to get what I could have gotten in like four or five. And I didn't yeah. care. Once I had completed it, I'm like, thank you for like, you know, I thank myself. I'm like, fuck, thank God that I actually got through this and completed what I said I was going to do. Because there was that lingering thing in my, the back of my mind. It's like, you didn't complete it. You left that thing unfinished. And it just kept killing me the fact that I was doing that on top of the fact that it didn't help me progress at all in bodybuilding. And all I did was just eat, sleep and train. And I didn't do anything else, but guess what? I was broke and have a car. I was partying on drugs every weekend and I didn't feel good about my life. And I didn't have anybody around me who was growing either. And I wasn't growing, even though I might've been building muscle, but that's not enough. It's not enough to satisfy the passion of living. And now it's like, dude, so much better in contrast. So as much as I think a lot of the younger guys, especially, they feel like, oh, I, I have to have like everything perfect. Like I need to be like locked into bodybuilding all the time. I have to work in a gym. To be honest, I actually felt like I had better balance when I was working in the restaurants than when I was working as a trainer in the gyms full time. Because when I was at Good Life from morning until night, the last thing I wanted to do was stay in the gym and train. I wanted to get the hell out of there. And I, I would go yeah, to that's other what I started with train. Yeah, right? Yeah. So now yeah. it's like, it's like, oh, now I get an opportunity to go back to the gym. Like, yeah, I can't wait to go there because I haven't been there all day. And even on the days that I am there all day, you know what? I'm at Pure Muscle and Fitness and it's way better than a good life. So I'm grateful for that too, you know? So, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's a thing I struggle well, with being a PT, man. Like training people and then like uh, you guys are probably the same as me. You put like, you, if you're training someone for legs, you're emotionally in their workout, you know, like you are pushing them. You are, you know, they're on the hack squat. You're saying, okay, yeah, three more, yeah, three seconds down. You you know, you, if you're a trainer that's into it, 
you're going to take a bit out of yourself just you mentally. Your yeah, you got to give your energy. Yeah, yeah, you give your energy. So I remember doing like three workouts in a row. It was like a, two back workouts, back to back, and then like a leg workout for these people. And I remember like I had like 15 minutes to smash a meal before my third session, did the third session. And then I was training legs after that. So I just put two people through two back workouts and then a big leg workout. And then I was training legs. I'm like, emotionally, I feel like I've been through the leg workout. Kind of tuned so it was, right then. Yeah. it was very hard to, for me to get going. So what I'd normally do is train, you know, two or three clients for the morning or maybe up to four and then train myself later that day in the afternoon and then shower there and then train clients after that. So yeah. that's sort of chunk like separate it. it. Yeah, you got to chunk it up. Yeah. yeah. But at the same that's... time, I still found it hard. It still felt more like my training still felt a little bit more like work than I wanted it to. And I wanted that to be my escape, I guess. You yeah. know, like especially I only really noticed that part of it is when like the, the training is my escape is when I went through like some real hard shit. When I let training stop and you go, holy crap, that was adding so much to my life, like so much benefit, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, well, I, think, I think there's a lot of good takeaways there. Yeah, there, a lot, there's a lot, a lot of good, of good takeaways. takeaways there. And I think it's good if we just ended there on a, on a high note. And uh, I yeah. think we're all we're all drained. We've all given our energy now. So first of all, I want to say yeah. thank you, boys, again, so much for coming on tonight. Because it really, really means a lot to me. Also, second of all, thank you guys for supporting Canadian Beef, listening to the show. Keep submitting your questions. We'll do it again next week. Yes, sir. Sounds good, man. Thank you, Robin. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you, you, brother.